All right, so um, we're back. We're still at SmallSat, uh, and I am with the crew from TJ Space. We're a high school uh, CubeSat team. Uh, do you guys want to introduce yourselves? Sure. So, hi guys, everyone home, and to everyone here, I guess, I guess you already know who I am, but uh, my name's Kareem, I'm part of TJ Space program, and I was the one of the electronics leads for TJ Reverb. Yeah, my name's Arush, I'm part of the electronics team as well, but I do like all sorts of random stuff. And I'm Nikhil, and I was the project manager for Reverb last year. We kind of talked a little bit about the, uh, the research you did, the program side of things. Now I want to talk about the spacecraft. <laughs> Everyone's like, yes. Finally got to talk about the fun part. So tell me about your mission. We are a TJ Space program, and we are putting together TJ Reverb, which is a 2U CubeSat that we built without using a satellite kit, using only commercial off-the-shelf and amateur hardware, and some of the hardware was even designed ourselves. The goal of the satellite is to evaluate the performance of this satellite communication system called Iridium. So Iridium is basically like... It's like, the, it's like a satellite phone's modem that you would mm -hmm. take when you go out hiking and there's no cell service so that you can stay in touch with people. Um, we are essentially trying to see how well that performs in space. We also have an interesting stabilization system. We have basically what's a bar magnet on the CubeSat so that you know, as it you know, orbits the Earth, it's going to align naturally to the Earth's magnetic field. And it, that provides an interesting kind of test case for the Iridium radio because as far as we know, nobody has actually seen how well the Iridium radio performs when we're using passive magnet stabilization. So something else notable about our thing is we are one of the first, actually the second, to use a flight computer uh, or a Raspberry Pi as a flight computer. So we're using nice. a Raspberry Pi Zero W, so like a very bare bones Pi. Um, it's 15 bucks. Right? I think that's the MSRP, <laughs> right? So, you know, a $15 computer really controlling crazy. like like thousands of dollars of space hardware. Yeah, obviously that's something cool else. though, because it means you can, if you like, if you blow it up. You know? Oh yeah, yeah, we don't, we don't <laughs> have to blow it up. Oh yeah. <laughs> like six, we have yeah, six we have pies like a, we, we have fried. We have a Raspberry Pi graveyard basically, yeah. So like, and in our lab, we basically have like a Raspberry Pi graveyard of like all the Raspberry Pis that we fried. So like, <laughs> this is the nice thing about being able to use cheap hardware. You could do stuff like that and just buy another one and it's yeah. not, you know, a terrible oh, tragedy. It's a way to do it, right? If you don't blow yeah, stuff yeah. up, you're really engineering. Yeah. Yeah, so we chose that sort of, you know, it's cheap, but also we're running Linux on it and that's also very easy. Oh, you know, it's very accessible, right? So we have the yeah. Linux kernel and then our flight software is Python. So we have PFS, Python flight software. And we did that entirely from scratch by ourselves, like we all coded it over the six year lifespan of this project. Um, and so that allows for this project to be sort of approachable. Python is a little bit more of a friendly language mm -hmm. than I'd say like C++ or it's, you know, it's real, like relatives. And it's also very powerful. So we were able to have this Python flight software and put it on the Pi and have it be accessible for all of us to sort of learn. Like um, I know we've all matured a lot in our Python knowledge throughout this thing and you know we're gonna take that knowledge from it yeah. and like apply it everywhere else and so I think that's just really cool. Another Do you have the thing where you go back to stuff you wrote as I get what would you got like a, a junior um, and you go back to the software yeah, that you wrote like, back then and it was like oh I just want to delete it all and start again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know my thing with you know with what you just brought up is that like I personally like I know I was a project manager but I'm also a software guy so like I'd say that, you know, I think it's fair to say that I wrote maybe like 60% of our flight software, just like myself. Mm -hmm. um, and like my experience with that has been like, you know, basically just grinding it out. Like this, like I wrote, like we wrote most of it, like December, you know, December, January, February time. Uh, we basically wrote like all of our software then. And like not even like a week after having like officially given the completed stamp, I was looking back at some of that stuff and it was just like, oh <laughs> God, why did I do that? Uh, yeah, we have these like little sessions that we call code review, <laughs> <laughs> where we like look at our code and like try to figure out what the heck we are doing with our lives. Yeah, like, it, was, it was very fun. Uh, that's excellent. I guess one thing, that, one thing that's special about Reverb is we have an outreach uh, part of our, I guess, PFS. So what that is, is that since we're a high school satellite team, we'd like to be able to share, first of all, the ability to like, communicate with the satellite to others to kind of encourage them to get into airspace and building satellites at a young age. So we have a few cool things you can do with it. From our website, you're able to communicate with our satellite. You can ask it to, to, to tell you a joke. You can play tic-tac-toe with it. And I think we have to manually enable it, but we also have chess and we have Stockfish uh, built on Pi. So 
That's so yeah. cool. So why did you pick the payloads or the mission goals that you did? Was there some reason behind it or was it literally just that they looked interesting? The interesting thing about running a high school CubeSat program is that everyone leaves after four years. So <laughs> nobody currently in the program actually was there when we selected the mission. All right. On top of that, you know, like undergrads have the same thing, but like when you enter a high school, you're a middle schooler. When you, when you enter undergrad, you've already learned stuff, right? You have your high school experience. But, like, imagine, like, a middle schooler, right? Mm -hmm. Like, and how much they know. And they're, they're just trying to build a satellite. So it takes a while for them to get up to speed, and then they leave, right? Yep. That's a problem. But, yeah, because of that, we were not there at the beginning of this project. <laughs> so they, they did stuff. I'm sure they did it because it was cool and, like, it hadn't been done before back then. It's been done before now. So it was driven by kind of a gap in the the space tech kind of yeah. um, capability. So like here, here's what I know about that, like from just reading through some of the club history stuff. Like what I understand is that in 2016 is when the idea for this satellite originally originated, right? And basically the goal was just to see does Iridium work in orbit, yes or no? Since then, there's been a NASA publication which has actually recommended Iridium for you know satellite communications and a couple others that show that it does work. So we've kind of shifted the mission objective to like investigate the passive magnet system plus Iridium because as far as we know, that hasn't been done. We walked into the lab um, you know, having something that was already there and our job was more to like get it across the finish line and just do it instead of like, you know, dealing with every single aspect of original design and like, you know, figuring out what the mission is going to be. So that was more of our role. So I guess there's been a couple of generations of students through now. Yeah. We're just getting started, as I said, but it'll be, it's very likely that probably we'll have some students coming in working on projects that other students have started. Has that detracted from the experience at all or has that been totally fine not getting to kind of pick your own direction? Like I, I haven't really noticed anybody, you know, being turned off by the idea that this is something that somebody else picked. Like for all of us, the what we just see is, oh my gosh, it's a satellite. We are literally putting a thing in space, <laughs> right? We, we're, we're, we're personally not that picky about like what the exact details are. Like, you know, in my opinion, could we have had a slightly more interesting and up-to-date mission? Like, yeah, if we had designed it this year, but also, man, it's a satellite, you know? <laughs> like that's so cool, right? Yeah. Like that, that, I think that's the general consensus in the club. We just want to do research. We want to contribute, but we also want to build a cool thing and put it into a cool place that, you know, right? And so that's just the fun of it. We don't care necessarily if it's like, oh my God, we didn't make it. Like, you know, we don't, we don't have inflated egos. I don't know if I'm inflating my own ego by saying that, but yeah. Uh, satellite building is very humbling. You realize how much you don't yeah. know, but it's also <laughs> great because you realize how much there is to learn. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like satellite building is a great way to kind of get into that and also just realize how much there is out there. And so it's a great entry point, I guess, quote unquote, even though it's extremely hard, but kind of throwing yourself in there, I think is the best way to get into it. Awesome. What is something that you wish someone had told you when you got started? Because uh, that's... I'll get you to point this one at, straight down the camera. Yes. Uh, <laughs> what should they know before they, they jump into this like head first? Okay, so uh, I guess the number one thing that you should know is building a satellite is hard. Like guys, it's actually really, really hard. Like, you know, it's, it's really easy for us to say, oh, we're gonna buy these components and we're gonna throw them together and we're gonna get a satellite out and it's gonna be done in a year. Like, no guys, it's not that simple. It's hard, man. <laughs> But like, okay, as far as like, you know, like, you know, what we, you know, would rec what kind of information would have been helpful? Like, I think that a big issue in our club for a long time was that we didn't document enough. And this was for all kinds of reasons, like mostly because people just didn't find it an interesting task. Like nobody, you know, nobody really wanted to write documentation and read documentation when you could be like, you know, actually working on, you know, you know, CubeSat things and getting the project, you know, to move forward. Uh, you know, and nobody really wanted to be reading the documentation either for some of the components that we bought off the shelf. So like, we didn't really understand the value of it. And I think that now this year that has kind of started to change because like, we've realized that if you want to understand how an electronics components works, you got to read the manual. You know, mm -hmm. you just like, there's no way around it. You just got to do it. And if you want to make sure that somebody next year is going to be able to do the same thing you did this year, you're going to have to say what you did and how you did it. Like, if you don't do that, then like, there is no way to ensure that, you know, what you're doing is going to have any continuity. Uh, you're going to come in, 
you're not going to know stuff. Yeah, it's hard. But you're also going to fail at things. And I think that shouldn't stop you from continuing to try to do things. Um, we sometimes, like, you know, this stuff is hard, like he said. This stuff, like, you're not going to be able to get it on the first try, right? And so, like, it, it's so intimidating to just walk in and, like, people are speaking a different language than you, but they're not. It's English, but then they're throwing around things like Iridium, PFS, I2C, and, like, you have no clue what is going on, and, like, you just try something, and it's it doesn't work, right? And it's it's just, like... That doesn't matter. That's not the point of this. The point of this is to learn, and everyone is there to learn. None of us are, no one there is going to be like a professional satellite designer or whatever. So, like, even if you fail, even if you have like what you think is a stupid question that you probably should know by now, you should just go ahead and ask it because no one is going to judge you just because everyone is in your position. Don't be afraid to descope. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, can you explain yeah. what descope means? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I guess when we first had our concept for Reverb, we wanted to have, I think, we planned to have a magnet torquer, we planned to have an ADCS. Did we have anything else that I didn't? Uh, S-band radio. S-band radio. Yeah. There was a lot of things that we were planning to have and then realized that that is a lot to take on for a high school satellite project for our first high school, or I guess our second, but our first large scale high school satellite project. And so we decided to descope it, meaning that we just didn't have it on our final satellite design. And that's nothing to be ashamed of. It's okay to take steps in different missions to get to points where you can start using things like ADF, ADCS and reaction wheels and things that are a lot more complicated and have a lot more moving parts than a quote unquote simple satellite, even though it's not simple at all, it's ridiculously hard. But it takes time and it's okay to build up to it. Don't be afraid to take small steps and that's, sure. what, that's what's needed sometimes to be able to make a successful satellite. So yeah, that's my advice. I love that, yeah. Don't be, don't be afraid to like, yeah, bring it, bring it down a level, make it a little bit, little bit simpler. Yeah. I want to add something just real quick. Like, we descoped, like he said, we descoped magnet torquers and other like active ADCS. And so we switched to passive magnetic stabilization. And that's, that's sort of like a central part of yeah. how, what makes our satellite <laughs> yeah, special. Cool. Like we're trying Iridium with passive magnetic stabilization. And that's sort of the new thing we're bringing. So descoping is not like a bad thing. It can actually be something that makes you better. It can be an opportunity. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, guys. It's Even just for me, it's really cool to be able to see that what we want to be doing um, over the next couple of years. It's like it's not impossible. It's really, really hard, but like people can do it. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, just the fact that you guys exist, that you're here, that you're presenting what you've done and, and sharing it. He's so cool. Um, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, no we'd love to see your progress. We're just, we would love for more people, more high schools. Yeah, man. To let's do let's stuff. be pen pals. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure.